Hello, everybody. Welcome back to video number six this time of SolidWorks RC Aircraft Design. So the last video, we, well, I mostly explained how to go about drawing all these cross sections or stations for the XP-56 cockpit bulge and ran in a couple of headaches, mostly with a few back here towards the back of the the, the bulge where the ventral fin is and how they just did not want to cooperate <laughs> with the shape of them. So what I ended up finding out is one of the bulkheads, the one that I has, was having issues with right here, was just a little too tall by about a quarter of an inch or so on two dimensions, at two points, I should say. And then this bulkhead right here, the next to the last one, the one just behind the one I was having issues with, I had actually used the wrong bulkhead to draw that one somehow. Um, so I ended up fixing both of those issues. And now you see we have the side view and it looks extremely good, extremely close to what the side view here would look like. Uh, the canopy, the front of it looks a little odd. Um, it looks a little more steep than what this drawing here shows. But when you actually look at photos of the real one, they don't look too far off. Uh, again, this is just a lack of data right here. That is why this one looks steeper than the engineering drawing here. So we got all that done. I believe the last video we did the side and the top outline view here. So we've got both of those going. Now the next thing we need to do in preparation for doing a loft of this is we need to come up here into sketch and we need to 3D sketch once again another spline for this outside bottom edge. So again, we select our spline tool and we just start connecting the dots, making sure we have the X, Y, and then the little yellow box with the circle with the two lines going through it at each point. That one I think I might have messed up on. Come back to it here in a bit. And then this back one here is really small. Once you get to the end, hit the escape button, and there we go. And here you see all these are black, except for this one. That one's an oddball. So we're just gonna drag it away. We're gonna click one of these little boxes to delete that relation. We're gonna click the point, hold the control, click that point, come back over inside it and now you see the point is now a solid black color and the other one I thought I messed up on same thing click on that point click on the little green box delete to delete the relation drag away the point hold control click the point we want it to be go inside it click somewhere else and it's black again just double check all of these make sure it's just those two that I missed which it is, and we'll scroll back out. And now we are done with that 3D sketch. I'm not doing a 3D sketch using these points here because what you'll find is if you do a 3D sketch, all of these, any sketch that you use as a guide curve has to intersect with every section. So this 3D sketch starts here, but it ends here. Well, you could come up with something that looks reasonably decent, a little nice little curve that kind of matches the top outline curve for this. But here in front of where the canopy goes, does it come out to here and then curve around? Does it curve from here to here? Like we, we don't really know. We just don't have enough data other than some pictures that are very poor at figuring out what it actually looks like because it's a clear piece of plastic. <laughs> So for now, we're not going to do a guide curve there unless we absolutely have to. So we're going to exit the 3D sketch by clicking the little arrow button, undo 3D sketch, and there we go. Now we have our 3D sketch, and I'm just going to do canopy side, side outline. 3D sketch for the name of that. Next thing we'll do is we'll come back up here to the features menu, hit lofted boss and base, and we'll start selecting all of our profiles. And again, you'll see the software sometimes does some really weird stuff when you just select the profiles. 
And again, if you didn't hear it last time, all your profiles have to either be open or they have to be closed. You cannot have a combination of open or closed ones. So as long as you have a closed profile, like all these are all blue all around each other, you're fine. So I have all profiles selected. Come highlight the guide curves box. Select the stop guide curve. You'll see the, the preview looks way better than it did. We'll select the bottom profile outline or guide curve. Again, it kind of changes it just a little bit. And then we'll do this 3D sketched spline that we use as a guide curve. And now we're looking pretty good. I'd say that that preview looks about like what you'd expect it to. Then come over here. We want to merge this part with this piece. But if I show you the spinner, what we don't want to do is we don't want to merge this, this, and the spinner all together. So down here in options, you want to make sure you have merge result. And then down here at feature scope, you don't want all the bodies. You only want selected bodies, but you don't want the program to select them. You want to select them. So unclick, or uncheck the auto select box, and then it automatically does highlights this box, solid bodies to affect. And we want it to affect just this body. So a click, we'll see if you slide off pops in. Green check for OK. It does some calculating and ta-da. Now we have our canopy sketch. I'm going to hide that outline sketch because we don't need it at the moment. Come over here. Now I'm just going to do that as a canopy bulge loft. And then once again, we can save it. I'm going to hide the spinner again because we don't need to stare at it all that much. And there we go. Now we have our canopy. And that is pretty much the easiest aspects of this part for now. Because at this point, I now have to figure out how I want to do the rest of the front of the canopy. And then I need to figure out how I want to do the backside of this trailing edge area, which is this part here is what we're looking at. And this part right here that we're looking at. Um, this area, since it's going to be basically on the full scale, it would just be a hollow piece with two pieces of skin that come together to probably weld it since this airplane was welded magnesium. What I will probably do just for simplicity's sakes is I will just draw this as a flat piece and then just extrude it out to here. That way what we get is we get the outline of it, but we don't necessarily care, care about the shape because there's not going to be a bulkhead here that's going to give us any of that shape most likely with how narrow this is i mean this particular station is only 0.88 inches thick so by the time you do this down to a quarter of that well it's 0.88 per side so it's about 1.7 inches so about an inch and three quarters two inches we'll say two inches thick so by the time you do a quarter of that you're only looking at a half of an inch thick so it'd be very very thin piece of material here on a model size, even less than that at one eighth, You're probably only looking at about a half inch total thickness, maybe even a quarter. So this whole area back here will likely end up becoming just a solid piece of balsa wood. Or since there was a change in how the tail went from this shape to where they actually extended this and added a vertical fin to the top of it, it'll end up becoming a little bit different. So I'm at this point, I'm not really worried about this one too much, but this one, I need to figure it out. Let's see how they're doing time-wise. Oh, we still got plenty of time. So now that we have all that done, what we'll do is we see we have half of it. So what we can do now is we can mirror this. We want to mirror it about the right plane, and we want to mirror this body we want to merge the solids in, the, in these surfaces. And you see a decent little preview. Hit the OK. And sometimes it gives this. Failed to merge a newly generated body from the work. So what we can do instead of a body, we can clear that. Let's try features. And let's try this. Let's do that one. It won't let me do that one. Sometimes this is one of the headaches of this. Let's do that. Let's not merge. Let's try not to note it. Oh, nope. No merge of solids without a work. There we go. 
sometimes like you'll see just before I did that, the backside of it was kind of weird looking. It wasn't one continuous piece. It had some offsets to it, oddly enough. So it almost looks two pieces that way and then two pieces that way. Let's see if the loft actually merged them like we wanted. Merge result, close the loft. Nope, that don't work. Yep. Looking at the wrong one. We need this one. Yep, merge, close it. Nope, don't want to close it. Try it again. Yeah, so what I have to do is I have to come down through and make sure all of those canopy bulge cross section sketches are actually in line with the origin. But sometimes they are, they still give you kind of oddball stuff like that. When you mirror it, you can't, it won't allow you to merge them. It just gives you an error all the time. So you can just mirror it. Now it's going to be difficult for me. I'll do that. <laughs> Now it's just going to call me a liar. You know, let's just start over. Let's just delete it. We'll try it again. Let's mirror it about that plane. We want to mirror the whole thing. There we go. And then what you can do is you can come up here into insert, I believe it's features, and then you can do combine. You can select both sides. That's a common. Show the preview. Won't let you do that. Let's try to add them. Still won't let you do it. So for some reason, there is an area, which we already know, where that cockpit loft into the fuselage loft comes together. That's creating this ridge line here. That's not allowing them to be completely together. So we're going to have to go back through all these canopy sketches and make sure that they are. Yeah, see that one was off just a tiny, tiny bit. And sometimes that's all it takes to get it to throw it off a little bit. See, just that one little one, I bet you that'll allow us to, to mirror this together now. Let's mirror it through the body. Let's try and merge the solids. Ah, see, there we go. That one little bit was enough to throw it off. And now we can come up here and we can look. Solid bodies is just two. We still have the spinner. And then we have one solid fuselage. So there we go. So now that we have that done, what we can do is we can use the evaluation tools that SolidWorks has built into it. You can see here how the side view kind of comes up a little bit. I'm probably going to adjust that just a little bit because I don't like how it kind of cranks up there at the end. Let's see if it's possible to to change that. Actually, no, I'm just going to leave it. I'll show you these evaluation tools first. All right, so back to evaluation tools. So if you come up here in the evaluation toolbar, if you don't have it, you can come up here and to uh, I believe that's under tools. It's somewhere up here. Maybe not. I don't know. Anyways, it should be here, evaluate toolbar. And you see over here you have what they call zebra stripes, and they also have curvature. If you select curvature, it gives you all these different colors to show you the curvature. The more consistent your colors are, like here at the top, the more consistent your curves are. Same here. You can see the cockpit actually looks really good. The curve comes up. The top view of it. Is nice and consistent. You got a little bit of green here where it becomes more of a peak. And it's pretty even. Looking from the front, it looks really, really nice. Down here at the bottom, you can see yeah, there's some variations. Here you can see curvature for about 40 thousandths. Radius of the curvature is 2476. And you can see as we get into the black, there's a little bit of a, some changes here. So that's the curvature one. Now, if we look at zebra stripes, zebra stripes are the ones that I find are a little bit easier to tell from the curvature. So from the zebra stripes, you can see the fuselage. The stripes are nice and consistent. They start kind of small, they get big, and then they're larger at the top, and they're kind of 
medium size here in the middle. Then the bottom is nice, nice, much nicer looking. And if we move it around to where we'll look at the bottom, it's nice and consistent side to side. A little bit of a difference here, but if we zoom in, you can see they're pretty dang close. If we rotate it around to where we see the other side, that looks really good. Do the top view, and you can see it's really consistent side to side. So these tools are extremely helpful for figuring out how accurate your curved surface is. And then they have a whole lot of other things too if you start getting into mold making and things. But we'll get into that later because the smaller version I'm going to point out I'm doing as a fiberglass fuselage that I'm going to 3D print the mold for. But hey, like I said, we'll get to that later. So that's basically the fuselage and the majority of the cockpit bulge. I'm going to cut this video a little short here, about 15 minutes or so. But that is the general consensus on how you go about lofting things. And almost everything airframe-wise when it comes to fuselage, wings, most tails, nacelles, everything is going to be a loft. Every now and then you might get something easy, like if you got a Hershey bar wing, like on a, on a Piper Cherokee, you can just do something simple, like a, an extruded boss, but then you don't have any... Uh, you won't have any washout or anything. So a lot of this information we'll start covering once we start getting into making wings and the vertical fins and everything, which won't be too much longer. But I think for today, I think this is a third video I've done. So I'm going to cut it short here. I hope you all have a good time and a great weekend. And we'll see you next time.